What's up, everybody? It's your girl Erica from the Classy Climb blog. We got Freedom Friday helmet hair. Yeah, we tried to ride on a bike a little bit earlier, so we got helmet hair. Anyways, what's good, you guys? It's a Freedom Friday. I've got the America shirt on. I'm super excited. It is time to level up. We're going to talk about credit, investing, and funding. Now, many of you are like, who is this chick talking to me? Why is she popping up in my ad stream? I'm Erica Williams, author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest to People, Real Estate, and businesses from the palm of your hand. Grab it on Amazon or grab it at the links below. So if you're here, hit that like button. We're gonna go get in. It's gonna be fun today. So I've already put in the links, some of the information you guys were looking for. Some of you guys are like, Erica, I need the information. Where's it at? Let me know, right? So I've already put it in there. Dang, thank you, Franklin Mine, $5 Super Chat already starting us off right. But look, I put it in there. If you, and I got an email, I told y'all what the prices were going to be. If you waited late to get in the credit repair business course, the prices was going to be up. But if you have the original invoice, because I haven't counseled them yet, I'm getting ready to counsel them on the 15th, you can still pay your original beta credit repair course invoice on PayPal and we'll take it. So uh, let me know if this is lagging at all. We had to get the internet people to the house today and I ain't got time to play because I'll call them again. I'll turn into Katie, soccer mom from the Burbs, and call them up. So let us know. Let's keep us posted. But also in there is the links for the private Facebook group and the uh, group for investing on Wild Wednesdays. Who is going to be there at Wild Wednesdays? Dr. Kevin Meadows, alternative financial medicine, author of that book. He's going to come and do a few. Uh, he's going to do note investing for online for sure. Then we have Charles Ogilvy the third JD owner of Todd Capital. He's coming to talk stocks and investments one of the Wednesdays. So we just got to get them narrowed down for their Wednesdays. I've kind of reached out an email form to many of the people you guys suggested and see what the feedback is. We'll see if they hit me back up. Um, I've hit them on different different ways. So um, Joseph, you want to be a mod for YouTube or you want to be a mod in the Facebook group? Let me know which one you're talking about. So I definitely want to get us in there and like so to kick it off, like our Facebook group, this is what we're going to be having there. We're going to be talking about credit, credit cards, banks. I'm going to be sharing banks that are doing cool specials, um, no doc companies, you know, because I can't even go through all the companies I want to talk about on here because, hey, we want to make money. Now, also, I have this handy dandy binder from Bank of England. Now, in this binder, I have several realtors, several title companies, several investors in Detroit. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to post auction stuff inside there. Uh, but you got to realize, like, we're going to really be kicking butt in this Facebook group because not only do I want you to be winning, I want you guys to be investors. And honestly, some of the real estate markets are softening. I'm going to show you some pictures. I'm going to show you some articles. Don't worry, because if you're here and you're ready to kick butt and you're ready to invest and you're ready to be knowledgeable, a sophisticated investor, at least you can kick butt in this marketplace. You can get some of this funding. You can get going like you want to get going. And I'm telling you. Time is like now. Like when I tell you guys to get business bank accounts, I mean it on this channel. I mean, go get your EIN number. It's absolutely free. IRS.gov from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Go get that freaking EIN, EIN number. And even if you don't have the LLC, if the bank will take that and a DBA, open that account. Get going. A lot of you are waiting to the last minute. And honestly, what I would compare the last recession to is like musical chairs. Everybody's just kind of lackadaisically playing musical chairs. And then all of a sudden the music stops. And people are holding a bag of half done houses or a bag of cut in half credit cards where the limits are absolutely cut and different things. So you want to be ahead of the game and not behind. And so that's what the Facebook group is. The Facebook group is also for some of y'all telling me what cities and states you're in. If I find deals, I'll share them on there. If I'm looking for a JV partner, I'm going to share it on there. I'm going to find people to work with and invest with through that Facebook group. So I work with the Hood Estates group. Again, if you want to get in the Hood Estates program, I have the links for that. It's going to be a great opportunity there over there as well. A lot of their people are already working together in the first group of people. They're already buying houses together. So I know this model works. I know working in these groups, if you got 10 grand and then homegirl over here got 10 grand and y'all live an hour apart and there's something in the middle y'all want to invest in, that crap can work. So that's why I'm so big on the Facebook group. Again, the links are up there for the Facebook group. And then the, <clears throat> and the live training. So the live training will be two hours on the next so far eight Wednesdays. 
we get 12 Wednesdays, that'd be awesome, but maybe eight Wednesdays. And we're going to go over auction sites, how to get in there, how much you need to purchase, how you can get in there, how you can get approved, how you can get some of these no doc loans. So you can buy these properties and turn around and sell them if need be. I bought an auction property, also helped two clients buy an auction property. So now I know a lot of what I want to show you in that live investing group. On top of having Dr. Meadows and Charles Ogilvy there, it's going to be lit fire, yo, lit fire. So <clears throat> let's see what we got here. Also, there's like 35 of you. We're, we're doing this game of email and messaging and link, and some links aren't working, but we're trying to get as many people into the Facebook group as possible. I really want that Facebook group to have like a thousand people. That's like kicking it from all across the nation because you got New York, Tennessee, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, you know, come in there. Tell us what city you're in, what your business is, what's your website so we can go check it out. We can work together. That thing's going to be fun. So definitely check that out. What's up, Natasha? Happy Friday. What's up, Soulful Shay? What's up, Sh Mentor Shelly? Pamela C, I just got off my J-O-B. I need to hear this. <laughs> Mr. Shelley just got off the job. Hey, everybody. Joseph, the Facebook group. Okay, Joseph, if you're already in there, send me a message. If not, um, I can work on getting you to be a moderator. So clearly, we're going to have more rules as the week goes on about the Facebook group. I'm okay with you guys posting within reason, right? Like, don't go crazy. Don't do anything scammy. It's spammy because right now we have Kim. Kim came in there, and we have, I got to find like two or more people because if it gets to like a thousand people, we're going to need more moderators. So, you know, I'm going to be posting links and articles. And so I think that'd be fun. What's up, Jamie Fields? Listening from the road, Erica, feel free to make me a mod on YouTube. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Thank you so much. I will do that. Because I think Cam Cam was busy the other day. Now, Chris Lee, you're a moderator. You should be able to see that up there. Uh, Jamar, well, hey, hey, NC Administrative Accounts Consulting. I need 10,000 need to get some pro what what is that what is that i don't know miami boy might need to get kicked out all right six figure day hey what's up everybody all right so yeah definitely check out uh those links for the facebook group i'm super excited about it i think it'll be good as we're getting y'all in there i'm trying to make it better we'll we'll kind of get everybody in there how we can what's up lit fire what's up hilltop <laughs> So I'm super excited. America shirt on the day. It's Friday. You know how it go. SB, hello. Oh, I need 10 grand. I need to invest. Let me see what he said, and I'll see if I need to delete it. Okay, well, when Miami boy finished being timed out, he can come back and explain what he's saying. So uh, some of the things I want to show y'all, I'm going to share the screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Let's move some of this over so you can see it. Now, you guys were like, Erica, you're so negative. I didn't want to scare you. I didn't want to be super negative, but I wanted y'all to be aware, right? I want you to be ready because if you're already, let me tell you, I'm in a group. I'm in a mastermind right now. Everybody in there, all we're doing all day long is calling banks, getting business lines of credit. <laughs> That's literally what those people are doing. Every time I get in there, I'm like, what's popping today? What bank are y'all calling? I mean, they know. They know the recession is coming in. Like many of them are working together with vacant lots. They're working together with buying properties. And so I know we can get our group lit like that too. If we're all on the same mojo, if we're all like, yo, my credit went up, yo, I'm buying a home. I mean, any of those things work. A lot of people say, Erica, what a, maybe I shouldn't buy a home. And that's not true. If you and your family are in that position to go buy a home, you can wait six months, you can wait a year. Things will be cheaper, but I don't want you to stop your life because you bought a home. Just buy wisely, buy smart. Get that credit shining. Build up the reserves. Because some of you, you, you know, you're living in towns and cities where rents are $2,000, but a mortgage is going to be $1,100. That's a $900 win right there. I'm just saying. So let me share the screen and get on here. Mm, 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 mm. I got the headset on. Let me know. Make sure you can hear me. All right. Perfect. This is Portland, Oregon. It has 16000 vacant apartments. Let's hear that again, y'all. 16,000 vacant apartments. So what you're going to see now, this post this this, you know, people who make this article, this whole blog, I mean, this whole website, I'm, they're a little left leaning, which is annoying to me. Sorry, it just is. But those 3,800 people now are all of them homeless. Are some of them working? What's going on in their condition? Because the guy or girl who partners up and they're both working at $10 an hour jobs, they gonna have a hard time getting an apartment anywhere anyways. 
So what we're looking forward to is some of these places are going to take a bite. Now, most of these apartments, I bet you money, are Airbnb. They're counting them vacant, but they're not. So I, I just bet money. I just bet money. So um, Portland has a 4.8 vacancy rate. And that was 352,000 apartments based on 2016. That comes out to roughly 16,000 apartments. So, and that's a rough estimate. It could be more, it could be less, right? You know, the numbers could move, but according to uh, housing data, rent calf, which we'll go over that because I think that's really beneficial for you guys. We'll put more of those into the Facebook group. Um, but average rent in Portland is 1425 That's expensive. And that's for a 750 square foot apartment. Okay, that's a one bedroom. I'm telling y'all, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I mean, that's why people are gonna be, people say, Erica, no, marriage is down. A lot of these guys say that on the internet, but trust me, when the recession comes, people are gonna be married. They're not gonna wanna stay at their parents' house because them and their siblings gonna be up in that house. It's gonna be too many people in that house. When they got a girlfriend they've been dating for a while, they're just gonna get uh, at the courthouse married and move into an apartment together. That's going to be what happens. I worked in apartments. I trust me. I saw it every every time you turned around. Somebody was putting their little two pennies together to live together with somebody. Next year, if they weren't married, they were bounced. They bounced out. One of them at least always left. So, again, this is just talking about this being empty like that, which I think is quite interesting. Okay. Now, here is, we'll come back to Rent Cafe. It's for apartments and marketing. Now, here is uscreditcardguide.com. Now, put this in your category. Everybody put this in your mind because what's going to happen is I'm going to post this also in the Facebook group, which the Facebook group looks like it looks right now. Do you see it? It's pretty light. I've been sending out messages for you guys to come in, um, get in here, come on in, you know, so we can get it rolling. Sorry, I didn't mean to show people's email there. But again, some of the members have already come. Cool. Let's make sure you can see that. Uh, that attachment didn't open up. So, but yeah, let's get in here and let's get moving so that we can all make it work. But check out uscreditcardguide.com. We want to, everybody get on this page and check this out in your free time. And we're going to do probably, a, I'll probably do it in, in the note investing one, or I'll do it either like just a video for the Facebook group and talk about what order you should apply for these credit cards in. Now, this is the business ones. This points and mouths that a lot of you are like, oh, Erica, I want the points, right? So this is what you guys are talking about when you're asking me about points and travel. As you can see, everybody wants an Amex card because they think it does a lot. But Marriott and this one are super powerful. They're better. They're more powerful than the other two. So um, in my opinion, again, we'll, we'll, we'll go through deep on this on another day, but we'll put it, I'll put it in the Facebook group so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Let me see what some of your guys' questions are. What are some of you guys' questions? Show me, show me, show me. All right, let's see. All right, y'all got some questions in here. Sunshine, hey, Eric, are you conducting your consultations or will it be your assistant? I am conducting my consultations. Are you talking about for credit? Or are you talking about for, if you if you pay for a consultation, I'm in here, I'm going to talk to you because uh, anytime we have email issues, I try to handle them. So if, if, you know, just let me know. I will be conducting them. Mark G, what's up? Cam Cam, what's Cam Cam back, everybody? Everybody like and subscribe. Cam Cam is also in the Facebook group already. He's a moderator. So you guys saw there's like 35 y'all. I've tried to invite. Only 20 have kind of hit the button. So you got to like check your emails. You got to like hit me up and let me know if you're not seeing it or if you need help. Okay. Hey, Erica, there's something wrong on the link. When I click, nothing happens. Which link, Picasso? For the Facebook group? Or for the PayPal. Now, if you click the link in the email, I realize the link in the email is not working. I've got, I've been aware. Um, you guys have it. Hit me up via email. And let me know it's not working. I apologize. So let's, uh, what I strongly suggest is you guys make sure you give me the email that you are on Facebook on, or you can reach out to me as Erica Williams, Erica Shante Williams on Facebook. And if I see your name and it looks familiar, I'll be able to just go, hey, click here or message me. Any of those work. 
from the business page, all that. Cause we want to get you in there. Um, because I'm just literally going whatever email you paid with, I literally put that email and let it send the email there. Good evening, the mayor of Detroit. Oh, we got the mayor of Detroit in here, y'all. <laughs> Renita Barnes, Erica, just finished your fantastic business credit course. Love all this information. Thank you so much. Um, you talking about the business credit repair course? Yes, love that. Le Leah, what's up? Cam, Cam, Erica, I'm a little bummed because I had to turn down a job offer in San Fran because I couldn't handle the debt of the move, the higher rent, the taxes. Ooh, yeah, San Fran is, is wilding right now. The numbers didn't look right. I'm trying to buy a multiplex later this year. The little Erica voice inside my head said, don't, don't do it, Cam. Nah, you can get a multiplex. Listen, don't, don't, never fear. The key here is you want to be in the position where you guys can do it, where you, where it does it, where it makes sense for you. Don't tell my trainer. This is so delicious though. I got to go. I got to go to the gym after this. Anyway, um, the numbers just have to work. And that's what we'll talk about a lot in the group. If the numbers work for you to live in one side and rent it out, or the numbers work for you to get a four unit and, and, and the rents look good, do it. I mean, like make it work for you. We can always discuss those things. Just join the super group. I'm all in. What's up, Jamar? Yeah, I think it'll be lit. I think if we get a thousand people in there, that thing's going to be lit. Just finished paying all my business and personal debt. What should I do now? Oh, it just depends on what you want to do to marry Detroit. You need to get up in that Facebook group and pitch some ideals. Uh, what are what are you trying to do? Sup, Melvin Parker? You have to copy and paste the link and put it in the search engine. Dang, is it that bad? I'm sorry. I'm gonna make sure we we get it working right for you guys. I apologize for that. We're we're gonna get on it now. Here is. Here's the problem. I'm going to show you this. I had to change it from secret group to close. So at least you guys could Google it and find it on um, on the Internet. Now, here, I'm going to put this link here. You're not going to be able to get in the group, but you'll see that's where you can find it on Facebook. You'll see it. And if you've already paid, I always crack for there's a question in there. When you try to get in, it will ask you what's the email you paid in. And you, I can't approve you till you get in there. And the moderators know not to approve you till we check that email. I'm trying to buy a multiplex unit. Okay, well, Mary Detroit, you have to get your numbers. Uh, you have to figure out what numbers you need to get in there as far as down payment, who's going to do your lending and funding. So that's a big thing. So let me show you another one. Let me see. I got some more to show y'all. You know, my favorite guy to talk about. The young kid who was 23, not Mr. Lau, but my the one who did 80 deals in one year, who ended up just running around calling all the contractors. And when I realized what he was doing, when I studied from Scotty Smith and them in Dallas, development, let's go over it again. What is development? 90% of the time, if you own the land, you are in a powerful position where the contractor or GC can come on, build a house, and they build that house. And when y'all sell that property, you know, you eke out, you know, let's say you paid five grand for the land. You're probably going to eke out 40K to 100K, depending on what kind of property and what's the size, right? And all you did was own the land. The guy who built the house walks away with a ton. So why am I showing you this? Because there is some softening in some markets. And so I just want to show you all this. Now, look at this house. We've talked about him in Nashville because Nashville has been crazy. So listen to what it says. New construction with a separate attached Airbnb studio to offset your mortgage payment or live in the studio and rent out the main part of the home for even more money. Unique product, rare opportunity to live in Nashville with very low payment. 1212 Avalon, $425,000. Now, what does that tell you about that, y'all? Tell me why he's offering that Airbnb in the back part. Give me some ideals. Give me some reasons you're thinking they're offering an Airbnb studio in the back part. Look at that property. Look how big it is. $425,000. Also, somebody in the comments put what your mortgage will be if it was $425,000. Because I know there's mortgage calculators. You guys can do that. That's two things. Tell me why you want to do Airbnb. And two, what is would be the mortgage on $425,000 $425, house? And there's a 30 second delay, so I got time. Just definitely look up those two answers. And while we're doing that, we're going to find, I'm going to show you all some of his other stuff. That's how I know. Okay, look at this one. This one. 
Okay. They're doing the more modern feel. Okay. Now look at this one. This is one lot they're putting one, two, three, four properties on. Unit D, unit B, unit C. Riverside, East Nashville, big backyards, spaced out, open plans, walkable to everything. 450000 a piece. Okay. Again, what are they doing? They take an old house that was probably right here, tear that old house down, and then put new construction in, in the which people hate, honestly, the box houses. And we'll look up some of these addresses. Four hundred and thirty each. So imagine buying a little house here for one hundred fifty. That's going nothing but a shack about to fall into the ground, and building two houses, four thirty each. That's eight hundred thousand. And Fisk is what Fisk University is a historically black college. So that tells you how different that area is. Okay, I'm gonna see what some of y'all answers are. Let's see what some of your answers are. JD to offset the mortgage. What about payments using the VA loan? A real engineer, Donnie Breeze. Hey y'all, what's up, Erica? Cam Cam in the house. Again, come on, y'all. Don't be quiet. Why would they build the Airbnb back there? Delty Lucid, thank you so much for looking that up. 2K would be the mortgage monthly. Late to the party. House hack. There you go, Mike Polar. House hack. Airbnb, you can rent it out per bedroom. I'm in Detroit. I love to find a few properties in walking distance to a college so I can have student rentals. Co-signed by the parents, of course. There you go. There you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can share the screen and show you the area where he's building that house up, Nashville. Now, the reason I'm commenting on this is if those people are starting to, oh, this is good. Let me show you what the house was on before that. Okay, are you guys ready? Let me see. This is the house that was on that property before he built the two for four four thirty each. Okay, are you guys seeing that? Does everybody see that? Hit a one in the comments. Holy crap. So look how big that acre was. That was a big acreage. You can tell it's an elderly person. They got the, the door, you know, the metal on the door, the old car in the yard. Nice big yard. Looks like two sides. It may have been a duplex. Two driveways, yeah. Now imagine buying that, now building that. Look at that neighborhood. Okay, you got that going. I don't know if that's a school, but they got some new windows here and there. But look at that lot. Oh, that was a sweet lot. That was a sweet deal. That was a great deal. That was pretty awesome. Okay. Just trying to give you, trying to show you what was in place of that. And when people are like, oh, I'm a developer and all that stuff, it's like, look at the size of that freaking lot. Help with funding. Mm -hmm. House hack. Yep. All that is for sure. Exactly. So like you live in the Airbnb studio, but you own the whole deal and you're renting it out. Let's say you're renting it out to a whole family if you want it to, or a couple of students, like let's say four or five students, three or four students, parents got money and they came and rent that house out from you for 2,500 and you're living in the Airbnb studio in the back for free. Well, boom. Mortgage covered. Students happy. Parents happy. That's that's the real deal right there. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Okay. I'm trying to find another one to show y'all. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see, let's see. I'm trying to find the Forbes. There was a Forbes list for boom towns. And the reason I want to show y'all this is I was saying by the time 
by the time they put up here, and this is 20, is this 2016? It is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is 2016. So this is two years ago. Every town they've listed on this article has been booming for the past 10 years. So by the time you hear about a recession or anything, stuff's been booming for the past 10 years. Frankly, my New York, I don't have beta credit repair price, my PayPal. Oh, Franklin, if it's Franklin, are you did you do it the first round or did you go to the website link? Trying to give grace to the people who already have who had the original link. Because it's a hundred dollar difference in the two courses. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. Let me go over here. All right, we're gonna show these boom towns. Okay. All right. I hope everybody can see that. That big, beautiful skyline. That is Houston, Texas. Look at it. Very beautiful. I like the cylinder parts. Get out of here, ad. This ad's always popping up. Okay. Get out of here, ad. Okay. All right. So this is Forbes Boomtown List. This is two years ago. Now, many people are like, oh, this is so cool, you know, but I'm just telling you. These are people with great populations from age 25 to 44, bachelor degrees, income growth, unemployment rate, population growth. Now, here's the problem. If you if you read this list two years ago and you tried to move, guess what? You moved to an already expensive ass place. <laughs> you did. You already did. Listen, top four, top in the top 10, Austin, Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, San Antonio. They're very different places. It's very true. Like if you go to Austin, we're chill. We're relaxed. We have a lot of people who work from home. We got a lot of tech. We also got a lot of big money here. Musicians, stars, celebrities, TV shows here. It's a whole different vibe. Lots of relaxation. You'll go to a bar at two in the afternoon. It's full of people relaxing. And they're not college students. They're people who work from home. There's a lot of women here married to men who work from home. Trust me. It's a, it's a nice city here. Houston, whole lot of driving. Dallas, a lot of hustle and bustle, but some parts of the city, very, very uppity, very, I'm just going to say it, fake. <laughs> you know, San Antonio is like this weird Mexico meets hipster. I don't know what the word is for it, but that's the best I can do to describe it. Again, Austin, of course, was number one. You already know. Number six was Houston. Yeah, number two was Salt Lake City. Number four was Denver. If you're in Denver, anybody in the comment section from Denver, please comment. You know more than anybody that Denver's going crazy. Definitely hit the like button so YouTube knows we like this. It helps out a lot. All right. So Southeast. So the thing about Salt Lake City that makes it difficult is the Mormon population. Right? So, you know, you got a lot of, it's got a high birth rate there because home homegirls be at home having them babies back to back to back. But also you're talking about a lot of culture class. So if your company moves you, to Denver, I meant to Salt Lake City, you need to be like, whoa, give me some extra money. So anyway, in the Southeast, you're talking about North Carolina, Raleigh, number five. And it's just like Austin, it merged as a tech hotspot. 49% of all Raleigh residents, 25 to 44, have a four-year degree, higher than any metro in the South. So when you go to Raleigh and you go to an apartment complex, I kid you guys not, when you go to an apartment complex, they'll have the flags flagging over the banister, you'll pretty much drive through the parking lot and it's just a bunch of flags. It is like every college in that area, East Carolina, the best school, mine. Um, <laughs> um, you'll have, you know, Raleigh, you'll have, you'll name it. They're going to be there. And these little flyers and, and people stickers all over their cars. It's rare to meet a man or a woman who don't have a degree when you go to Raleigh, just being honest. And if they don't, it's like, usually they have a really great job anyway. So it's not even a big deal. There's a lot of opportunity there in Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill area. Um, San Jose, San Francisco, again, y'all, if you want to go out there, woo, need a lot of money. Now they call these the fading enchiladas. Why are they fading? That's New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago. Anybody in the group from New York, anybody in the group from Los Angeles, anybody in there for Chicago, put some comments in there. Why are they fading? It's expensive, people leaving, you know, what crime, Chicago, over, Chicago had over 3,000 uh, middle class black families bounce. I mean, no, they had 300,000 middle class black families bounce. So, what does that leave? The poorer folks staying behind in Chicago. 
Then they had 3,000 millionaires leave Chicago over the past 10 years. Now, they didn't all just leave Illinois. Some moved around. Some moved to the surrounding states. You know, everybody doesn't just leave and go all the way to south. Some people leave and go to the state to the left or the right and just start anew. Again, Los Angeles population more heavily Latino and African American. It's also well educated. 34% of their people holding bachelor degrees. Again, you know, it has some more. Let me see if I can put the post up. Let's see if it'll let me do it. It's kind of let me do it. It's driving real slow. Stop it. All right. So, of course, that's Austin. This right here. Number one is Austin, of course. Sorry, the ads are everywhere. Number two, Salt Lake City. And um, I guess I'll post this in the group or something so you guys can see it for yourself. Goodness, these ads. Good Lord, y'all gonna make y'all money. Get on out of here. Okay. Number three... San Jose, dude, I can't with the ads drive me crazy. I'm going to get off of there. Anyway, we'll put that link in the Facebook group because that's going to drive me crazy. But you do see the point of what I'm trying to show you all there. About how expensive those places are, about what's going on. All right, y'all responded to the emails. I already see somebody trying to join the Facebook group. Good job, y'all. Hit it up so we can be in there. Make sure you have your questions in here. Let me see what you guys got. What questions y'all have? Okay, thank y'all. Thank y'all for telling me the email didn't work. Okay, so let's see what y'all guys' questions are. <laughs> you may want to use Austin, USPS, Denver is crazy. So Shay, tell us why Denver is crazy. Give me give me some reasons why Denver is crazy. I used to want to move there. Actually in St. Petersburg, Florida, acres going for 5K. That's true. Okay. Whoa, gosh, it's jumping, it's jumping. Hold on. Yeah, St. Petersburg, Florida and Tampa, Florida. So there's a girl I have an interview, Amanda Young. She was a single mom, nurse. She ended up buying 10, no, five rentals. And then eventually she's now she's engaged and she's buying like six more rentals and they have an elevator company. Like they do, they do, they do a bank, but she used to have nurses buy his houses all over Tampa and um, St. Pete. Cam Cam, that's the reason why I didn't do San Francisco. An inflated salary doesn't necessarily mean lots of savings when local prices are inflated. Correct. $4,000 rents. Oh, I just fainted, Cam Cam. I just fainted. That's just abusive. Okay. Me, NYC. What's up, Julia? Is in NYC. Leah's in New York. Picasso's from Chicago. JT's in New York. Julia Dixon, a little both. NYC is hella expensive. They are fading because prices are rising and wages are increases. It's stressful for folks without high earning skills and experiences. Exactly. Oh, it's jumping again. High property tax, high crime rate, not a friendly place for small business. Many of my associates incorporate their businesses in Indiana. Thank you, Picasso. That's what the that's what I was trying to say. Like it was showing. Um, there's a graph if I could find it, but it shows like this is Illinois, and it's like the migration is completely out. It's out to every state around it, and so Indiana, even though Gary went away, it's kind of coming back because. One, people are investing in it. Two, it's just a smaller town that's making some comeback, not completely. And and three, it's like, you know, people have to go where they can win. If you go on an Instagram page, you see where I posted about small bit small towns making a comeback, especially here near Austin. When you want to start a business and you realize Austin is too expensive, but you can go up here to Georgetown or Pflugerville. And I know this sounds crazy, but listen to me. If you can go into Georgetown, Pflugerville and rent an office for 300, big office space, in comparison where you rent the, a tiny office space for a thousand bucks a month down here in Austin, and then you start dominating in your small town. I did a whole video series on this. There's a black guy who is here in Austin, 
and he wears a cowboy hat on the billboards up near Georgetown. And he makes a killing, selling land, being the black cowboy, real estate agent, selling dude ever, right? And what is that? Because he has a niche. He bought up all the cheap billboards out in the out in the edges. He puts his signs out everywhere, out in the edges. You know, he's the guy you call. So it's not necessarily about race. It's about who can sell my house and get me the most money. That black cowboy. I'm going to call that black cowboy. Mr. Keller Williams, black cowboy guy. And if you're from here, you know what I'm talking about. If you drive through Georgetown, you know what I'm talking about. Those small places, um, those smaller cities, what's going to happen is what's going to happen is you're going to be able to have people go in those towns and dominate. Like that one lady I show off YouTube who her son bought her a camera because she was feeling depressed because the last recession was depressing her. Her and her husband, I think they had lost their jobs, and she started making sewing videos, and now they own over 17 buildings in their town. They have a restaurant, a hotel. Let me pull her up. Because I, I think when I talk about small towns, you guys are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. I'm pull her up. That, I talk a lot about her. But um, I think y'all be like, okay, or go whatever. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. I might not be able to find her. But essentially, her family, it started with a YouTube video, and they started getting so popular. It, it, was, it was crazy. Like, they own and dominate their little town. Mm. Might not be able to find her today, y'all. See, you know, when I want to look at something, it just makes it hard. Nope. Okay, so if I find her, I'll put her in the Facebook group. But essentially, I want you guys to see her video because her kids literally bought a camera and they started recording her, and she it just took off. Why? Because it's it's niche, it's unique. You know, people want to learn stuff they didn't learn from their grandparents. So now they own like four buildings um, that just have sewing stuff and sewing relating events. Then they have a hotel, and then they have this other thing. But they were YouTube ads were advertising them for a long time, just blowing them up. It was crazy. So. Shame, soulful shame thing about moving down south. Okay. Girl, the south, where is that? I don't care what they tell you. Um, let's see. So if we wanted to buy property, should we stay away from those higher priced areas? No, Julie Dixon. The point of me talking about those higher priced areas is you'll have the rent. They'll boom for the next five more years. The point is, can you afford to buy in those areas? If not, go in an area where you can dominate. And then at least if you know those areas, like if you know that's the wealthier area, you can stay on a lookout because some of those places are going to have the price cut. Like right now here in Austin, everything around the edges are taking a lower cut, but everything in the center is still expensive and high. And they don't have no price. They have no reason to let go because there will still be people who go, you know what? I want to live closer to downtown Austin. I don't want to live in the suburbs. But, you know, you can win living in the suburbs. So. Thank you, Cam Cam, for helping her out. Mike Polar, California, SB, NYC, Soulful Shay. They legalized weed a year ago. Everybody and their mom has moved to Colorado. Traffic, rental prices, homes are extremely expensive. Yes, listen, they have um, Southwest flights to Denver. And here in Austin, people lost their damn minds for a month. They Every time you look up for a flight for Denver, it'd be sold out. You'd be like, it's not that serious, y'all. But it was for them. Also, Chicago is a sanctuary city, very dangerous to maintain. The Democrats have ruined the city with their social agenda. Uh, you know, you know. 
they want to start universal income in the state of Illinois, also very dangerous. So whenever I hear anything about universal income or basic income, that's really a payoff to keep people from rioting. And I'm just going to say that, being honest. It's really just a way to go, uh, I'm not going to say Pookie and Ray Ray, but also Carlos and Jeff and, and, and Jose. Like when I'm in Austin and I see the homeless people, you know, trying to ask for change or at the light, trying to like, give me some change. And sometimes you go down there, they're a little angry. They're a little, they're a little grumpy. And imagine if we were in a true recession where one of them might throw a rock in your car because they're so mad and they're hungry. Now, we have a lot of places where they can get food if they're really hungry. We have a lot of times they give them um, food stamp cards. But Texas is so hard on people. They're like, yo, three months and you better be off. Uh, I just see a place in our economy where they're doing that to kind of pacify people who don't have skills. Because there is a segment of people who know. Like, I I'm telling you, all when I used to work and make people's resumes and you'd ask them why they didn't go to community college and get a skill, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you'd be like... You in here homeless at this homeless shelter and I'm trying to help you and you hollering at me when you can get a Pell Grant to get you some money in your pocket and get a new skill. Does that make sense, bro? Or you talk to them about driving trucks. I don't want to drive trucks. Well, you homeless right now. So uh, honestly, being on the road ain't gonna hurt you. So it's like, I see what's happening. You have a society of people. They're on Instagram. They're looking on TV. How come I can't live like that? That's just not just you're not there yet, bro. That's not your even level to even think about. So, you know, I don't know why Illinois is voting the way they are as much as they've been tripping. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry I couldn't find the sewing video, but I'll put it in the Facebook group. See, there's so much stuff I want to put in the Facebook group that we can talk about because then we're all on the same page. You know what I'm talking about. It's not something I'm like, you know that video I talked about, y'all? Then y'all know. That's right, Renita Barnes. You can be a big fish in a small town. What's up, Sweet James Franklin? I only got the website link, only not the first one. Credit business. Franklin. Okay. Franklin, are you talking about the credit repair business, Franklin? I mean, I can send you the PayPal link after this is over. Joshua Hill, I would love to move to Houston, but the way they easily flood the insurance changed my mind. Ha! Joshua Hill, let me tell you, that only affected one tiny corner of Houston. And, and, and this, this is what I'm trying to say. When people saw the Houston flooding, they were confused because this is what happened. There's 50 other counties. There's like literally 15 other counties around Houston that actually were flooded. Houston had one corner of its town flooded, and everybody just moved on to the other side of town and kept on working. They kept going to work. Nothing was wrong. What you're talking about, the flooding a lot of y'all saw on the news and TV was Beaumont, was um, the little small black people towns around there, the small Hispanic towns around there. That's the big flooding you saw. And those people were smart enough to get out of Dodge way in advance. It's not like, it's not like Louisiana. They got out of there. Now, I saw stories of people going, yeah, I mean, this flooded and I'm sad. I'm stuck. And they're like, you were in New Orleans. They're like, yeah, I was in New Orleans. And you talk to them, realize their life been shitty for 10 years since they left New Orleans. They've been working the same kind of low income jobs. Same, some of them still ain't got no car. That shit don't make no sense. Left New Orleans like that and still ain't doing better. It don't make no sense. Hold on, it's jumped on me. Let me get back up. Frida James, Salt Lake, the boom is real. Lots of big business and larger growing immigrant community in addition to Mormons. Medium home price is two fifty, dollars even in the hood. You got to go up to northern Utah. Mm. Now, um, our school played BYU, East Carolina University, and um, they played dirty. BYU played dirty. Them some frustrated Mormons, okay? Um, but I want to go to Provo to go ski. Denver market is hot. It is very hot. I see Todd, Josh, and Becky homeless in Chi-Town, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they homeless. Don't get it twisted. Like, with backpacks and fishing rods. I just died. <laughs> Listen, I drove over here. We went to a concert. If you guys saw my Instagram, you saw I went to Imagine Dragons conference last night. We just did a surprise. Like, let's go. It was awesome. It was lit. But the th problem is 
there's parts over here where you see campers parked and trucks parked where you know people are sleeping in the car. You know that campers are legally parked over there. But you got places in Texas that are so big, like you got people who own like a thousand acres. If you parked on one part of their land, they don't know unless the alarm goes off, right? They don't even know. And we were driving around this hood part and I was like, you see those tents in the woods? And she said, oh, yeah, I see them. But that's that's what you see. That's what people do. People do that for real. People sleep in cars. All the hotels in Austin would be packed. All the weekly stays be packed. And companies sometimes will pay for months for people to be up in the Hilton. And they'd be like, well, we're paying for them housing. And then you talk to the guy or girl, and I'm not saying they're stupid, because a lot of times their engineers are high paid people. It's just they're freaking debt to their eyeballs. So they're sitting there arguing with the company to go ahead and pay for them to have an apartment. The company's like, nah, we won't pay for your apartment, but we'll pay for your hotel. So the person, instead of getting their money together and getting an apartment, literally stays in the free hotel for a year. Like, well, I'm saving money. Not really, bro. You're not really, like, you're at the whim of that company if they want to let you go. And that's the part that cracks me up. I'm like, our hotels stay full of people because they think they're getting over on some company. And I'm like, no, the company's really getting over on you. So, anyway, that's my two cent. I'm put my glass. Sorry, my glasses were just nasty. Okay, let me see here. Looking like my Aunt Darsh right now. All right. Sorry, this headset is like good and bad. Gentrification is taking place in Denver. They bought all the old homes in the hood, moving all our people out. So, so full shade, I'm, I have two minds of gentrification. Some of those areas need investment, period. Two, there was a joke on, on Facebook. Don't take it personal where it says, black people use gentrification for everything they can't afford. That's the term they use for everything they can't afford. And here's the funny part. If grandma and grandpa have a house in the hood that you know the area is getting worse or, or need to get better or whatever, you can be investing in that same neighborhood. The fact is people don't want to invest in those neighborhoods because they don't want their stuff broken or tore up, but then you can't complain when other people come invest in that neighborhood. Can't complain when uh, Ollie Boo Boo and them come get open up a gas station or corner store and don't treat people nice. You can't complain. Like I know Africans that open up stores in corner markets and they're meaner to the black people than the, than the Arabs are. You know what I mean? And people get mad, but I'm like, well, the Africans come here and they don't bought a store in their neighborhood and you buying stuff every day, spending $2 and change every day to get beers or a pack of noodle pack. Yeah, they think this is crazy. So anyway, but I understand there has to be a balance, right? I don't like people's property taxes going through the roof. There has to be a balance. What's up, Miss JJ? Erica, see you in class Wednesday. What's up, Rhonda? Yeah, so I'm super excited about the Wednesday classes. I'm very excited, if y'all can't tell. Hold on one second, y'all. <laughs> Nationwide is on your side. It's cheaper to keep her. Yeah. Bring me some more questions, y'all. It's cheaper to keep her. Da, 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 da. It's cheaper to keep her. Hey, what's up? Thank you, Brandon Jackson, for joining the course. Thank you guys for joining the course. Uh, I'm, it's going to be lit up in there. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. It's going to be super fun. Oops. Okay, let's see. Uh, okay, let's go on back. All right, what else? What else? Oh, Lord, it popped all the way back to the top. Hold on, y'all. This thing is so wacky today. Because I'm not using the mouse. That's what it is. Okay, let me go back up. A little bit. There we are. Wait, no, no. There we go. All right. NC Administrator, I'm thinking about driving trucks, keeping my son with me so he can do my research biz while you drive. <laughs> What type of research do you do? NC administrative clients from paper writing. Biz online. Okay, that's nice. Soulful Shay. I now realize that if you aren't creating your own reality, you'll be perpetually perpetually shifted. I refuse to live like that. Getting in where I fit in, plan on getting to C B D and hemp body products. <laughs> Listen, Soulful Shay, honey. She just, I mean, that right there is a class in its own. Now listen to this. I'm going to repeat what she said. I now realize if you aren't creating your own reality, you will be 
which I'll say continually, shifted. I refuse to live like that. If you do not plan, you're planning to fail. If you do not create, you are going, it's sell or be sold, right? Like I told y'all about Instagram, how last week, like there was crazy. I bought like 20 different things off Instagram. I'm like, oh, I like that. I need that. Bought it. I literally getting ready to buy some hemp oil right now to help with sleep, right? Because I drink coffee too late in the afternoons. And if I don't go do my workouts in the morning, I'm not tired enough to go to bed on time. So I was like, oh, and then I saw like 20 fitness YouTubers on Instagram talking about, oh man, I get this CB, CBD oil. It works. It helps me go to sleep. But I'm like, ding, 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 ding. And then I thought about it. Well, you know what CBD oil is? <gasps> the marijuana. Okay. <laughs> right. So, right. Like, you know, I'm being ridiculous, but, um, but for real, it's like, this is, if you do not create your reality, the cheese has moved point blank period. The cheese has moved. Um, not all opportunities are gone, but you guys got to realize like a lot of the stuff people are complaining about in these communities. If you like, when I see that article, I still tell you this day, when I saw that article from the woman from Clemson was donated her house in like her aunt died and she got a free house and you look behind her, the house got raggedy window blinds. There's a not working car in the, in the garage port. There's all kind of stuff going on. I'm like, boo boo. Why though? You got a free house. You've been living there for 15 years and now you're complaining about property taxes. That really tells me what you've been doing is just kind of lazy ass in it for the past 15 years. Not really repairing the house, not doing much, just not doing much. And so people like that are going to continuously lose, whether it's a recession or not. You got to figure out where to win. Now, there's a, people in Houston are mad because a lot of people near downtown were giving up their homes like these were paid off homes and they had a few repairs. They didn't want to make the repairs and investors would come and go, hey, I'm gonna give you 30 grand cash. You can bounce and they would take it. But the houses were worth 100,000, 300,000, 400,000. It's the key is their credit's bad, so they can't refinance. The house needs repairs, so they can't refinance. They can't take equity out either because the bank's like, that house is raggedy. What's going on? There's so many issues there where it's dysfunction of your own making. So if you live downtown and you see gentrification coming, you ought to be, number one, cleaning your credit. Two, cut your grass. Clean your yard up. Get the blinds looking good. Take pictures of it. If you go to the bank and ask for money, you're showing pictures of a nice, well-kept house. No injuries, no damages, no broken stuff. It's a win-win, baby. Make the money while you can. So, again, if you don't plan, you will be shifted. You will continue. We, you'll be moved. There's an Instagram page called You Will Be Moved. And it's talking about Houston and gentrification. And they made a whole DVD. And it's the truth. You will be moved. Why be it? Are realtors more successful in smaller towns versus big cities in Texas? Ooh, Miss Jaja, that's a tough one. Now, I would say the realtors I meet here in Austin that start out with apartment locating, they're like, there's 157 people moving a day. So it's like they're just in there getting moves every day. Trying to, like if somebody, I remember calling this one agent saying, uh, maybe I'm moving in, in a month. Oh, okay, well, here's an appointment. You can set an appointment with me next week. So they were listening for people who were like, I need to move now. I'm an engineer. I need to move right now. I just got a job offer. I need to move now. That's who they were trying to work with. So big cities give you a lot of opportunity. Um, smaller towns, you can build a bigger name. The key when it comes to real estate always is like it, like even if you were at Kelly Williams and some of their training, write down a list of 150 people you know. Out of that 150 people, how many of them need some kind of home service, right? How many of them need uh, a realtor to help them move or find an apartment? And that's the problem. A lot of people move to a new city and don't know anybody. So now they got to result to door knocking and, um, you know, cold call tactics, techniques and stuff like that, which not everybody wants to do that either, which I've seen a lot of door knocking. He can respond to my emails. I can homeschool him. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying. Joshua Hill, as far as Dallas does, those Epity Diddy parts give you the same vibe as DC, Maryland. Somewhat Joshua Hill. Like when I was in Uptown, which all used to be black and now it's completely, you know, it's got gay street over here with all the bars owned by the gay people. And then over here is a completely different vibe, Uptown. Um, it's not that part that's crazy, but there was a part further over where the Whole Foods is like in this neighborhood. And there was this, there was this like lady homeless begging and I saw a police officer tell her she got to keep it moving. And I was like, that's how, you know, you really hit the money when the police officer don't just ignore you. They go, keep it moving, keep it walking, keep it going. 
homeless lady, what you doing over here? You know what I mean? Like that's the money levels. And you're going to start seeing more of that as far as like when I go to the HEB down the street for me, they got a security guard with two guns and three mags on his belly. I'm like, bro, what's about to back out in this parking lot? And it's not a dangerous area. It's just one of the biggest, fastest um, HEBs they have over here. They be having a full staff at night. They stay open 24 hours. They literally have a full staff of like 20 people up in there. Like the cashiers, they have like 12 cashiers. And then, it, well, let me let me rephrase that. They'll have like 30 people on the floor stocking shelves because this is one of the fastest HEBs ever. Then they'll have like up front, like at least 12 cashiers. Now, not all the cashiers be working all the time because it's not that crazy all night long, but a solid five are straight up working like line is going at one o'clock in the morning going um because it's just an hgb that's a pivotal point on i-35 um i sometimes i see ca- trailers parked in the parking lot sometimes i see campers parked out there they be up in that bad boy you know what i mean so it, it, it's one of those things where security is going to you're going to see a lot of changes in security you're going to start seeing more security guards because i'm telling you the ring doorbell was the canary in the coal mine Right. Because most people, when they see something that's not theirs, they don't pick it up. Right. Like not mine, not picking up. There's a video that went viral of these three little white kids. They found an a wallet with seven hundred dollars in it. And they said, sir. And they came to the door and the ring doorbell is talking to them. Um, Here's your wallet. Like the person clearly wasn't home. So they're like, we're going to put it in here so nobody else takes it and put the wallet like behind something so nobody would take it. Like imagine that. That's the good heartedness of most people. Like, I'm going to return this. It's not mine. But, um, like, there's even another video I was thinking about that went viral. It was a black man. And he he didn't look home, he didn't look ran down, but he was he was going to the store and buying shoes. So this white guy went to go chase him and go, see, you spent the money on my credit card. Because he was trying to see if the man would return the wallet. And the man's like, no, this is my money for my job. Here's your wallet. I was getting ready to take it to the police department. I just wanted to drop my shoes off at my house. And the white dude had to be like, oh, egg on my face. Like, I'm so sorry. He's like, I didn't spend a dollar at all in your wallet. It's still full of money. I'm going to take it to the police department. And in that moment, like, of course, they, they like, stopped. And they stopped the camera. They were apologizing to him. They were like, we're really sorry. Because that for a while, that was a YouTube channel that was popular off seeing people take stuff that wasn't theirs or try to steal. It was crazy. But that was that's why Ring Doorbell is the canary in the coal mine to show you that people are struggling. They're still in packages off front porches. They don't even know what's in it. They don't even know. They just need it. They're going to just take it and try to pawn it or something. It's crazy. But people, I think, assumed before the camera. See, this is what the problem is. The camera is telling on people. You got a lot of these cameras telling on white people acting a fool in public. People didn't believe you. Now they got camera proof. They be acting a fool. Cops acting a fool. And white people stealing. Off front porches, kids, teenagers, all kind of people stealing off these front porches. That's why Ring Doorbell makes mad money. So, um, it, it's just one of those things. So, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna calm down. I saw a whoops, it jumped again. Hold on. I saw a PBS special on software engineer in California earning 175,000 who bought a moving truck and fitted it to a queen bed size mattress and dresser was living in a rent fee, investing and saving all his money. Oh yeah, can him. They have a guy who worked for Google. He got in trouble. He got in trouble. He, he was on TV. And I think that might be the same guy. And he, cause Google was like, they were ignoring him living in the parking lot. Cause other people were doing it too. But, um, yeah, they got on him. They're like, don't, don't make us look bad. Will you have any promotions on your credit repair program here again? So my business repair, my credit repair is $250. The business credit repair course is $295. The only way you're going to, the only thing I'm doing this right now is you can get in. If you want to do the PayPal full payment, you can get in that way. But like I said at the beginning of the show, anybody who was trying to get in there, if you still have your original PayPal invoice I sent to you, they get deleted on the 15th, you can pay it. Just pay the invoice and you can get in manually enrolled in the course. But Charlotte, if you want that, I can send you that PayPal link. I don't mind doing it. I just want people who are hardworking and are going to work their butt off. Right. Because on Thursday, not this Thursday, but I think next Thursday, which day is it? Next Thursday, we have the training, the, the next live training for the um, 
credit repair business because most people would have got their stuff started by now. Rhonda W., how can I be a part of your of the Detroit tour? Is the land bank the best place in Detroit to find duplexes? I'm ready to quit my job. I'm sorry, Rhonda. Um, so Aisha's thing, let me see if I can put it in post it in here. Give me one second and I'll post her link, I think. Ooh, let me see. She sent it to me. Uh oh. She's gonna be mad with me. Um, she sent me the link. Oh no. Where is this link at? And I can put it in here. It's for the Detroit tour. Um, Aisha is giving the Detroit tour showing properties. You're gonna be able to invest with her. She's gonna bring um investors, all kind of people. Um it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit, lit, lit. I'm gonna be there. We have the kids gonna be recording us. It's gonna be fun times. Let's see, where is her link at, man? Ah, there we go. Okay, you can click this link for Eventbrite tickets to her show. Um, and it's a bus, it's a full on bus tour, yo. It's a full on bus tour. Sorry, I put that long old link in there. I didn't have my short link yet. Let me see if I can get my short link. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, she's one of the best. And she had literally. Brazilians fly in to go see Detroit to invest in Detroit and she was like all right get a cool car don't be don't be flashy they brought up four Range Rovers just driving up full of Brazilians going to go check out properties <laughs> and I'm like what so then she had a dude from Israel um do the same right so it, it, it's it's really funny how you know everybody else is investing in Detroit but people who were in the United States almost. And then like when we were there, uh, when we were there, they had, I mean, good Lord, they had all kind of people there. So let me see. They go, okay, there's my short link. Hold on. I'm gonna share that with y'all too. Cause y'all be acting like I don't give you these links. I'm gonna give you all the links, all the links at the same time. Okay, let me see. Erica, was there a third Q&A call for the credit repair business? Of course, not sure if I missed it. Uh, yes, Cam Cam, you did miss it. You were missed. We had it on there, but the video is uploaded. Sorry, I'm making the camera shake like that, y'all. It's uploaded in the course, Cam Cam. You can go check it out. A friend is paying $22,000 on property taxes on a home in Oak Park, Illinois, a suburb west of Chicago. She and her husband are retired university professors and want to move back to the city ASAP. Dang. See, see, hold on. Picasso, let me say something. And you're not going to like it. They don't have a good plan. And let's keep it 100. It, you, university professors don't even make a ton of money depending on the university if it's a private they make good money but a lot of times on average they make forty thousand to sixty thousand dollars a year unless they have research and studies they're in so twenty two thousand dollars a year in property taxes is a thousand eight hundred a month that's like them paying on an apartment they don't even have now here's my problem with that they should already be invested in something giving them two grand a month anyway though when people tell me they're retired you're not retired if you don't have money coming in actively and what the retirement in America is going to start looking like is some kind of small business they do and then um, pension or Social Security card or whatever. Right. Because there's people who call me who have Social Security already. It ain't enough. It ain't enough. They'd have to move to rural, rural nowhere spot and grow their own vegetables and not go anywhere in order to live off the money that Social Security is going to give you. So I'm not mad at them, but I'm going to tell them. Instead of trying to figure out a way to move back to the city, they need to figure out a way to bring in $2,000 a month. And that's either buying one or two rentals in Indiana or somewhere near and keep it moving. Move on with your life. That's all I'm saying. That, that's where that's why I want to do this Facebook group. That's why I want to do this investing because a lot of you are like, and not, not just y'all, but on the internet and on the web are like, whoo, I'm retired. Whew. Well, things are going to cost. Things are going to be expensive. 
as you retire, healthcare is going to be more expensive. You have to be ready and you have to have a certain amount of income to really consider yourself retired. Uh, Renita Barnes, I learned so much in your business credit course, following your advice, fixing my credit to get that business line of credit rolling. My score jumped 40 points already. Keep building that hot fire. Renita! Everybody, Renita's the quote of the day. She learned so much from the course. She's going to be a testimonial. I don't know how we might have to get you. Thank you for the $2 super chat, Renita. We might have to get you on LinkedIn or something. Put a referral up somewhere. Thank you. I'm new here from Wisconsin. Thank you, Miss JJ. Thanks for visiting. Mike Polar is 2K plus to rent a home in Compton. Woo. Woo. Sky Club here. I'm 28. Blessed we found your channel. You keep it 100. Follow both of your IGs. Join the notes investing class in the FBA group. Okay. Gotcha. Oops. I made it jump up. Let me go back up. All right. Miss Monet here. Can you talk about how investors get with development companies to get involved in new developments? So uh, what that guy did, which we can talk about him some more, Devin McLeish, he went and talked to every single construction company in town. Like he literally was like, how can I work with you? How can I get up in here? And some of them blew him off because he was 23 years old. They're thinking, here's this little kid. Get out of my face. Um, they were ignoring him. And some took him serious. And so now in one year, he did 83 deals. Then he had a, he has a mailing list. Let me just say 2,000 people. He was mailing every month postcards. He's like, well, you don't come off our list until we buy the house from you. He's like, and so there was three men's giving him the money to mail 2,000 postcards a month. So you do the math on 2,000 postcards a month times 44 cents. And it originally came out of, let me see if I can find it and I'll share it with y'all. Mm. This is a life changer. If y'all can read this one. So he's 23 years old and did 58 deals. Let me I'm gonna put it in the comments. I stay giving y'all hot fire, fire, fire links. Thank you for the $20 super chat. Rhonda, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for the other $5 super chat. I see somebody else did it. I'm getting down there. Give me a second to get to the screen. I think we're going on an hour. So let's, we'll wrap it up in 20 minutes. Cause it's always tough for the people who come behind y'all. We're going to watch this on their off time. Now, sometimes truckers can watch this and chill, but not everybody has that kind of time. Now, this right here is when I say get on bigger pockets, many people complain and say, Erica, you know, bigger pockets talks down to hoods and war zones and black communities. I don't want to hear from bigger pockets. I'm just saying use bigger pockets for what it is. There's a million people on here with money, with credit cards that are investing. They're real estate agents. They doing stuff. This is where you want to be. I'm just telling you, this is a two-year-old article. So the, the houses you see him now are like crazy big. Now, at 23 years old, he was building. He wasn't building, but builders were building 17 houses. He did 58 deals in one year. Check out this video. This kid looks so great. Of course, people didn't take him serious when he started coming around. I mean, there's so many gems in this article alone. This show is sponsored by Reality Shares. You can finance your deals with some of these crowdfunding groups I'm talking about. That's why I'm so excited to do the live investing group. I'm going to do that live training. And I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to show y'all how I got. I just got money for this last auction. I'm super hyped. I don't know about y'all, but I'm hyped. So he was living on 15000 a year. Now, what's funny is when you're 23 and you got a place to stay, um, a really cheap apartment or you're co-housing with people, and you don't really go out. You don't really watch TV. You don't do. You don't go to the movie theaters. You got money. Again, what happened is his mom got like a inheritance of like fifty thousand dollars, and he was like, "Trust me, trust me." He was just like going out there talking to everybody, knocking on doors, and she finally realized, okay, this kid is really serious. My son is so freaking serious. I better work with him. So, again, he started out with 300 yellow letters and then kept going and going and going. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> I'm telling you, what's funny is he was so busy, he did a 
investing group thing, investing tour. And, you know, people that come, all of them are investing with him. That's all I'm saying. So this is his one, his Facebook, not that big, but you can see some stuff he's sharing on there. Okay. Then you go over here. This is his email. This is where you can get on here. This website. This is, look how simple that is. It's so cheap and simple. It cracks me up about us. Let's see. If it, yeah. It doesn't even have, it doesn't have them even on there anymore. Okay. Um, but yeah, listen to this art. Listen to this one. Y'all really want to, you, you want to see how it can be done for the investing. You'll be very pleasantly surprised. Okay. What else y'all got in here? New construction is where it's at. Cheap land in NC. Bedroom communities and major cities I want in. Tell me more about the credit repair program. Ms. Jaw, um, the credit repair business class is for people who want to make a business out of credit repair, right? And in the coming recession, what I feel is going to happen is you're going to have people who are, oh, no, it's a recession. Oh, shit. I better, like, by the time they figure out what's going on, we're going to be in it. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, like that's why I'm doing all these courses. That's why I'm talking to y'all. That's why I'm like literally trying to say, if y'all want to start investing with me and other people, you better get going. You better get going, man. Like, you you don't you don't have time. You don't have time. To like, mm, I don't know. Hmm, maybe I don't think it. I'm thinking about Erica. Maybe I'm thinking about it more. Mm, I don't know. Like, I'm telling you right now, the um, hood estates. There are people. Let's even go to their page. I'm going to show you some people have already bought trucks, already bought stuff. Like they are getting on it. Uh, let me see. <laughs> yeah, I'll share this. Let me see. <clears throat> but anyway, the point is why I was doing the credit repair classes, because some people ask me about, you know, credit repair and like how they can grow their business. And like at the end of the day, a lot of times people get started um, with business credit and they're doing all these hoops when the real money is business lines of credit. And if your personal credit looks fine and they take a peek over there just in case you're brand new and they keep on moving. Now, many of you say, well, Erica, they told me in some uh, interview I can keep my business and personal credit separate. Well, yeah, that's if your business has been making real money because some people ain't trying to grow real businesses. Let's be really honest. There's a lot of people out there. They want to get business credit cards, but they ain't really trying to grow a $8,000, $10,000 a month business because that would really have they a working. You know what I mean? So let's keep it 100. All right. So this is somebody from their class, which I think this is cute and funny. Uh, Lord Filming got his first truck on the road with the help of Hood Estates. And Trucking Justin, somehow in the future, I'm going to do a video with Trucking Justin. He doesn't know it, but I totally am. <laughs> so anyway, this guy's funny. I think this is funny. Again, this is Instagram Trucking Justin and Logic Boogie, which is kind of funny. But, y you know, I don't know how to explain to y'all, like, the time to get moving. You know, you got 12 months before the thing is real big, big. But for real, though. Like, if you get started now, if you start getting business credit cards, if you start getting business lines of credit, you start bumping into people to work with and JV deals on, deals are everywhere. It's just the money. It's just the fear, too. You know, people are afraid, and I get it. I get it. Again, you can check this out on your own. Again, this is Troy, Lord Fleming. It's cracking me up. He said, get up off your A and be inspired. People crack me up. So you see what he's doing here? This is what I tell people. When people really want to be like, they, they, I'm not saying they stunt for the gram, but they are. But hey, you buy some trucks, you make it $1,000 a week and some money off the trucks, you can do that. I don't know about that, but let's keep it clean, PG, for the TVs. Okay. Y'all can look at that on your own time. Here's another one. This is Justin Trucking. Account is private, so we'll follow that one. Wait a minute. His is also private. All right, logistics boogie. I finished school and started my own business. They say, oh, you graduated? No, I decided I was finished. <laughs> I love that. No, I decided I was finished. I love that. Love that, love that. 
Okay, so yeah. Again, you can touch base with these people. The thing is, my whole power, my whole issue is connecting people who are trying to do something. If y'all trying to do something, that's what's up. I'm not trying to convince people, oh, maybe I should clean my credit. Maybe I should get my shit right. Like, I don't have time for that. You know what I mean? Like, people who are movers and shakers and really want to make some money in this economy, it is about to be your time to shine. If you think, nah, Erica, nah, 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 I'm going to wait until the recession happened, you know, girl, when I get that recession, girl, I'm going to really be, uh, I'm going to be winning. No, you're not. You're not going to be in the game. You ain't going to have no credit. You ain't going to have no capital. You ain't going to be doing nothing. This one lady was like, well, last recession, Erica, um, my credit cards got cut in half and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, if you had more credit cards, if you had 500000 in credit and they cut it in half, you'd had two fifty, and you'd still been playing. Let me just peep game to you like this. I watched a mastermind. The guy said, if you had $100,000, you don't you don't care you in the game you just got to keep recycling that money smaller faster other ways i mean i'm just telling y'all that's what i'm doing i'm not i'm trying to convince people to be winners i'm only wanting to work with winners so again i'll put it in the links below again the facebook group so you can see it i put asia's dent and construction thing again i'm like typing so hard i'm sorry um Melvin Parker, thank you for the $5 super chat. Thank you, Rhonda, for the $20 super chat. The, thanks for the wealth of information you share for free. It's truly changed my scope of possibilities. Thank you. Thank you for supporting the channel. Thank you guys for hitting the like button. It's like 93 of y'all on here. Definitely hit the like button. It tells YouTube that people like this. There's over 12,000 subscribers to this channel and most people have a hard time getting the notifications. So we want that Facebook group to be lit. We want y'all to be able to communicate with each other and like encourage each other and pump each other's business up. It's a way to work together. I'm trying to get there working on my personal. All right, Mark G, get it. You can do it. Daniel McCray, what's up? Fresh J collection killing me three years old, but they update every month. Ooh, why they play with you like that? Fresh J, they playing with you. Fresh J, you got to hit them with all the letters. You got to hit them uppercut them you gotta be like ah oh, you gotta hit them with a boom you gotta hit them with the give me the verification you gotta hit them with the statue of limitations what state you in fresh day depending on what state you in they might be at the statue of limitations you gotta hit them up now how do you combat the collection agency hitting you every month how do you combat that having three to six positive lines I mean, it's going to ding you every month, but those three to six positive lines, if you got one $20,000 credit card and it's like soupkin strong, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like the scales, one ding versus six positive lines. I don't know why people call me while I'm doing my show. So rude. They know I'm on. I'm on here talking to y'all. They're playing games with me. They know I'm in here doing stuff. And it's somebody from South Carolina. Now, they ought to know better. All right. I texted him. Okay. We got him in check. I don't know who that was. Hold on, y'all. Sorry about that. I'll be like, now, y'all know I'm working. Anyway, all right. So again, thank you guys for supporting this channel. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, um, Melvin Parker. Thank you, Renita Barnes for the two dollars chat. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Um, again, bring your questions because we want to kind of wrap it up. Thank you, Franklin Mind five dollars super chat. Because what happens is people after y'all come on here. Again, thank you, Natasha, um, for the super chat. What happens is people come after y'all, and you have to watch this whole hour and thirty minutes. They'd be like, "Dang, Erica, why are you here talking so long?" I'd be like, "I'm just giving it to the people. It's like a radio show." Anyway, Miss Jaja, where can I find info about the credit repair business, uh, Miss Jaja? I can give you the link to the websites, but on the website, the credit repair business is two ninety seven. If you pay through the special PayPal link for the beta course, which is where we still interacting and giving feedback on it, um, it's one ninety seven. So it's up to you, poo poo. But I'll give you the link. I'll let you look at it because at the end of the day, here's how I look at it. I feel like 
the more people winning, the better, right? If a lot of y'all are winning in this group and these Facebook groups and y'all in y'all different cities and we can combine together and invest, isn't it better to have five investments that you have partner on than just one? I don't know. Y'all tell me. Um, in the links, somebody asked me about the business credit repair business course. Here is the link to the site. You can look at it on your own and click the link. All right. That NOLA LOL 504 girl. Okay. Natasha, $20 super chat. Boom, boom. Mark G, $5 super chat. Boom, boom. Thank you so much. Again, Natasha said what Rhonda said. What Rhonda said is thanks for all the wealth of information you share for free. It's truly changed my scope of possibilities. You guys, the sky's the limit, right? Like, sky's the limit if you want it. Like and subscribe. Definitely hit the like button. It's 94 of y'all watching. Let's get those likes up so YouTube cannot suppress your girl so your girl isn't suppressed. Mind over matter. Once you find a business that works for you, it's easy to scale. Not all businesses work for all people. And some visitors take a short while to see regular cash flow. Everything is not for everyone. That's why when I show some of these things in here and I post some of these courses, some of y'all can take the tax lien thing and just make your 18%. Keep moving. Some of y'all can get over here and get on a computer and y'all got computer skills like Cam Cam and them and y'all up in there selling your skills. Everybody's got different skills. So again, Mount Over Matter said just for everybody to hear, once you find a business that works for you, it's easy to scale. Not all businesses work for all people. And some ventures take a short time to see regular cash flow. Liked Soulful Shay. So should we aim for six lines of credit, Joshua Hill? You should. Three to six positive lines of credit at all times helps balance out any negative. Because what some of y'all are fighting against is time. If you just got a 30-day late last month, you're going to need six months to a year before somebody going to be like, he can't pay his bills. You see that? Nah, I ain't giving him no money. I mean, you need to have some space. And that's what happened. A lot of people try to jump over to the business credit pair side without really making a business that was making a lot of money. And so at the end of the day, banks are like, yo, I need to see your personal. And they're like, nah, this is my separate business. And when they didn't get a bunch of credit cards after running around getting all these vendor accounts, they were mad. But what the problem is, some of them weren't even building a real business. And so that's my key is like, if you're building a real business and you got track record and you got P&L, which is profit and loss, and you can show the bank, if somebody asks you for your profit and loss sheets, they don't mind giving you business lines of credit. But again, that's when you're building a real business. Amen, praises. <laughs> Info's great. Thank you, Maurice Ellis. Thank you so much, Mrs. Jaja. Thank you so much. This group is going to push the start of Erica Williams Real Estate Fund. Look out, Jay Morris. <laughs> hey, listen, shh, don't tell them. How do hood estates help with trucking? Mark G, so basically their course, what they teach in that course over there, which you can go through my links on Instagram and get it or anywhere, is, and you can tell them I sent you. That'd be really helpful. You know what I'm saying? Um, they show you how they do it. Now, what do they do? They own the truck. They don't hire the driver. The driver just works 1099 for them. And every Friday they get a check from the main company and they cut the cut, you know, either 50, 50 deal, 70, 30 or 40, 40, whoever it is you're working with can figure that out. But they cut it usually 50, 50 with them um, for the check for working, for driving the truck. So that's the, the paychecks you see on their Instagram is their payout. So a lot of times they have paychecks on there for a thousand, three hundred, a thousand, six hundred, um, just nine hundred dollars. And any maintenance on the truck, they take care of. So basically, the third-party logistics company, to give you a short answer. But you definitely want, they, they have a $25 part you can check out, which I'll show it up here. Because <clears throat> I think it's that, I think it's that powerful. You know what I'm saying? I'll put the link in here for y'all. Now, they got a $25 part. They got a course. The $25 will give you the intro so you can overview what it is. This is for hood estates, trucking. I'm just giving y'all all the links, every link, all the links. You can't say you haven't got the good information out of this channel. 
I try to give you hot fire flames. Let's see if I have another one. Because so far, I can tell 430 of y'all from this channel went and checked out that link. Now, I only know two of y'all who bought the course. So some of y'all are listening for real. Some of y'all are serious about this. I'm proud of y'all for those of you who are really doing it. But again, how do we make all these things move and work for you? Credit, business credit. You need your credit repair? You need to talk to me? Figure it out. Okay, I'm ready to invest. Receive $72,000 business credit card. Woo! Joe Wilson. Everybody give Joe Wilson a clap. That's the winning right there. Joe Wilson, what's your plans with your credit card? What you plan on investing in? Let us know. Let the audience know. Mrs. Jada, are there any advantages to bankruptcy? Hell no. I did a whole video about it. I think it's somewhere on the channel. There's a difference in somebody who's making 10 grand a month doing bankruptcy and a guy who's making 3000 a month. Now, let, let me just let me give you a short answer on that. The guy making $10,000 a month, he, and when his bankruptcy go through, he going to take a two, three grand, go open up a new secure credit card at his bank, going to go open up a secure loan at his bank, and in a month or two, he's going to be right back in the game. Somebody who's only making three grand and they file for bankruptcy and they own payment plans, they ain't starting back over like that. I don't think bankruptcy is the answer. Nine times out of 10, whoo, let me be careful. Now, don't take my word on it. There's a book. I'll see if I can get y'all to pull a book up. See if I can pull it up. Mm. Hold on. Dang it. I can't, um, Mm. Okay, when I find it, I'll put it in the Facebook group. I'm sorry, you're not going to get it today. <laughs> it's essentially is a book of a guy who had over, I look so serious and mean right now, I'm sorry. Uh, when he, he ran up almost like, I think half a million dollars in credit card debt, it ended up settling for less than $90,000, like for pennies on the dollar. And what happens is a lot of you trying to jump in bankruptcy, like, woo, clean start, clean start, but your money ain't new. So it really ain't no advantage to you. And honestly, what you need to do is let some of those credit cards go and then sell it out in collections. You, it's a shorter time period than seven to 10 years. Because what happens is a lot of you get bankruptcy. Then you call me or you call people like, get it off my credit. Oh, boo boo. I can only get the thing off the public records. Some of your accounts are going to stay there. They're not going to come off. That company's going to make sure they stick it to you. They're like every month. She going she gonna to pay us. Even if it's $35 for 20 years, we're going to take that $35 every month for 20 years. I mean, it's ridiculous. So really, you're not saving yourself any trouble. The really thing is get the mindset change. Because if you get 90% of y'all, when you call me talking about bankruptcy on $10,000, you could work a part-time job for one year and every extra $1,000 off the part-time job, you go to pay all your debt off. Some of y'all have an income problem, not a spending problem. So again, I don't... If you want looking on this channel for advantages of bankruptcy, I don't have any to give you. Sorry. I apologize. Miss Jaja, are they okay? Miss Fresh J, I have five, five positive lines and I'm in Georgia. Okay, we'll work off getting your old getting your collection off. <laughs> I will be in touch with you. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay, Fresh J. Cam Cam, Joe Wilson Kratz, tell us how you did. Soulful J, please give me the link to the personal credit repair class. Okay. It's I keep putting the links in there. Is everybody seeing the links? Um, I keep putting them in there. Let me know. if, And that's a credit repair business class that teaches you how to run a credit repair business. If you just need personal credit, just hit the pers credit button and we can, I can talk with you and teach you. But if you want to learn the business of it, so not only can you get yours done, you can also work with other people. That's the link I'm sharing.
Go ahead, Joe. What about late mortgage payments? How long should you wait to get a HELOC after you're you are caught? You're out there. Um, depends. I would go and um, after you're caught up, I would get Goodwill letter them and ask them to remove. Hey, you know, sorry, I messed up. My payment's been on time for the past six months. Can you please remove that late 30 day payment? Because them late 30 day payments affect you for about a good year. Hold on. Don't look at the hair. Don't look at it. It's a hot mess. But these glasses and this forehead are not working together. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Shelley said, I'm at the hair salon listening. Hey, everybody. What's up, Mr. Shelley? I got to get my hair straightened. Like, not this week because there's a wedding coming up, but in the week after that. That's right. I'm about to obliterate my $50,000 in student loans in eight months. Yeah. Anything's possible. With extra income. It really is. Okay. So, yeah, we're all caught up on links. Everybody should have all the links they want. There's 60 likes. There's 86 of y'all watching. Hit the like button. I know some of y'all are jumping off here, going to check on the links. Some of you are hitting the Facebook group. Um, I see the request popping up. I see them. Good, good, good. Make sure you hit the pay. You pay. I'm going to see you. I'm going to hit you up. Like, okay, boom, boom. Like, there's 10 requests. Cool. Make sure I'm going to go check the accounts. Check your emails. Because we want that Facebook group popping. We're going to be sharing stuff in there. We're going to be sharing deals. I'm going to be like, yo, watch me get this auction. We're going to hit. It's going to be fire up in there. So I'm going to put down here um, credit repair. This is the Facebook group again the reason we're charging ten dollars a month for the facebook group because we want people who are go-getters people who are actually doing stuff and people who are going to promote their business in there we're okay with you promoting a business as long as everybody's paying in because when we're paying in this way we can bring on specials we can do special stuff kind of like a patreon secret secret video in the facebook group or do a live in the facebook group real here and there cool stuff like that I have three positive reporting accounts. I feel like I need more, but I don't want any new accounts that affect the age of my credit history. I'm currently in a credit repair process. True Hill, Hill Top, it depends. Mentor Shelly, we ended together. Excited for the investments in the future. Yes, I see the links. Cool. Okay, everybody seeing the Facebook links. Um, Y'all, it's going to be lit. So again, while investing Wednesday, we're going to have Dr. Meadows in there. We're going to have Todd Capital come in there one week. We're going to be talking about investing, buying performing notes, buying non-performing notes. We're going to show you how to buy some of these stocks. We're going to show you how to invest in rich uncles, all these ones. I've made several emails so I can keep my identity intact and we can show you how to buy on the website and on that. And then I'll show you some of the auctions and the no doc loans. It's going to be hot fire. It's going to be prime fire. I mean, I'm, I hope y'all are excited as I am about this. Um, it, it's going to be some good stuff. You, you guys should be excited. You have some really good opportunities in there. So um, for anybody who was like wanting to be in the credit repair business, you need to right now put your email off to the right hand side so I can notice in you this PayPal invoice because I want I want us all to win. But we, we got to be on the same page, baby. So if you want to get it, you can put it in there. Um, what else? If you want to get in the note investing 101, the links are over there. What else? Gosh, I don't, what am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything? Let's work on our emails this week to check, make sure everybody's getting the emails for the Classy Glam group. Anything I'm missing, y'all? Let me know anything I'm missing. been on for a good while. I have a two-month-old business. I have 20K. Should I get two 10 secure credit cards or one 20,000 secure credit card? No, I think you should just get one $5,000 secure credit card. That's it. Business secure credit card. That's it. Get one. Facebook group. I must I must be in there. See y'all soon. Your new microphone sounds great. I'm glad because people were complaining about my microphone a bunch. I was like, y'all better calm down. Erica, if you have an extra 100 to 200 a month, should you be paying that off or, or paying off what? Student loans or what? Finish the question, Yolan. Oh, saving to invest. Um, it's a combination. It's up to you. Like, I, I would always maintain a hundred dollars that I invest at all times. That's me. Um, because a hundred a week is so is so little, 
right? And if you're making extra income, you can do that. So again, thank you, Franklin. Thank you. Um, I'm going through the list. Thank you, Rhonda, for the $20 super chat. Thank you, Renita Barnes, for the $2 super chat. Thank you, Melvin Parker, for the $5 super chat. Thank you, Natasha, for the $20 super chat. Thank you, Mark G, for the $5 super chat. You guys are supporting this channel. You're supporting um, opportunity for other people to come see it. So that's that's really the win. And that live Wednesday going to be fun. I'm excited. Okay, so the email at the bottom is for people who want to learn how to do the credit repair business. Just to make sure, I can send y'all the link and y'all can get in there because we do some live training. Now, the links I just put is for the private Facebook group, one. And the second one is for the no investing group. That is going to be on every Wednesday for the next eight weeks, two hours minimum. We're going to get somebody in there, Dr. Meadows one week, Todd Capital one week. We're going to find some other people to talk about gold, silver, investing, buying stuff online. Because this way, if y'all ready, if you already like know, you know how to get on these auction sites, you know how to make money, you good to go. You can win. Like, like a lot of y'all, I think you have the knowledge and you got to just start connecting with people and go ahead and get those investments rolling. Do you know what I mean? So I see Tracy. Okay. Will the Todd Capital interview be in the Facebook group or on the other platform? It will be in the no investing class. So I'm going to see if he'll come on the Facebook group for a little bit for something, but mostly he's going to be in that note investing and he's probably going to go over some stocks. Now I'm going to go over some dividend stocks. I like, I think he's going to go over some other stocks and some other uh, investment opportunities. So the thing is we wanted him to break it down. How do you know, how do you pick which ones you want? Hello, Mint Financial. But we've been on here a good hour and 37 minutes. So we got to roll out. I can't keep y'all on here all day. So definitely check out those links. I'll send out those emails to two people on PayPal. If you guys want to be a part of that credit repair business group, you can. If you want to be a part of that note investing 101, hit that link. Your girl's got to go. Again, this is Erica from the Classy Climb blog, the author of the Smartphone Millionaire book, How to Invest to People from Your Phone. Boom. Real estate, land, businesses, you name it. It's super fun. So we've been here an hour and 37 minutes. It's going to be super long. We'll definitely hit the like button for you. Leave. I'd highly appreciate that. And people who come after this video goes, thank you for also hitting the like button. I can tell when y'all do it after the video is over. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you guys for supporting the show. Like and subscribe. Share these videos. Jump up in the note investing class. You're going to love it. I'm Audi. Make Audis. Thank you, Cam Cam. Thank you, all the moderators. Thank you for the moderators in the Facebook group. I will be responding to your messages, making you moderators. I'm super excited. I'll put some comments and some links in the Facebook group. I'm out.